I've got a slate of 12 names here, and we're going to do a little versus battle uh, for you guys. So you guys have to be quick on your feet. Give me the answer, 30 seconds. Um, so here we go. You guys ready? I'll go Matt, then Ariel for all of these. So we'll start with Tony Bennett or Hubert Davis. Um, I'm, ooh, I'm going with Hubert Davis. Uh, I just think that the way he responded in year one, it doesn't mean that I'm calling Tony Bennett out. I think he's still a fantastic coach. I think Tony Bennett's the best coach in the ACC still. But going down the line, I think I'd rather have Hubert Davis as my head coach. I'm going to oh, go here we go. I'm gonna go with Tony Bennett. Uh, one championship. There's so few coaches active that have a championship. And to do it, and he's still pretty young. Um, yeah, I think Tony Bennett is really underrated because he's had a couple down, not even down years, but just not good years. Um, but Tony Bennett is prime was a top three coach. So I'm going to go with Tony. Yeah, we got a disagreement right off the top. Any, anything you want to add, Matt? No, I think that's good. I mean, all right, let's keep right, it moving. John Shire or Kyle Neptune? Um, obviously, this is the battle of two big time programs uh, getting two new coaches. Uh, I already talked I about the hire earlier, so I got to go with Kyle Neptune. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't turn back on him now. I just think that, that was a tremendous hire on their part. Again, if I'm ranking the Big East coaches going into this specific year, I, might, uh, I don't think I have Neptune in the top five. But again, down the road, it just seemed like a great hire. Duke already had their plan in place. They, they've been doing this. We didn't know about Villanova doing this. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it was done under the radar like that makes it seem even more confident. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. Um, it's just always hard to put a coach with um, no coaching experience um, ahead of someone who does. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go with that soon. Um, next year, probably going to go with Shire just based on how things go. Maybe not. We'll see. But uh, right now, I think Neptune just based on the little experience from both. We will see. And this one, this one might be my – actually, no, this one's not my favorite. I'll let you guys know my favorite. This one, this one's spooky, though. I like this one. Bill Calipari – oh, I'm sorry. Bill Calipari, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm going to have to take that one back. Bill So, or as you probably already guessed it now, John Calipari. Go ahead, Matt. Um, I think it'd be wrong for me to say Bill Self. It's just, it's intriguing to me because John Calipari obviously can get guys to the NBA, but honestly, Self's done the same thing. So that might not be that big of an argument now. Um, I got to go Self. You, I mean, he's coming off the championship. It's too hard for me not to. Yeah. I mean, only coach with two college basketball championships that's active. Um, I mean, Kentucky hasn't made a tournament or hasn't won a tournament game in a thousand days. He just won a national championship. Uh, I don't even think it's as close as people make it. I'm going to go with Bill. Or you could just take Bill Calipari and, you know, just call it a day with that. Okay, moving on. Tom Izzo, and I'll go, Ariel, you're going to go first now. So Tom Izzo, or you know it, you know it himself, the man himself, Jimmy Beheim. who are you going with? I think there's, this only is, one, there's only one right answer here. I think this is probably the hardest one, but I'm going to go with Izzo just based on recency. Syracuse in the last seven-ish years just hasn't been that good, and it's kind of it's under the radar because they always make that weird deep tournament run, um, and that's because no one could figure out the zone. But Izzo has been more consistent the last couple of years. Um, Bayheim, I mean, his last couple of teams just haven't been good. He's kind of been banking on his sons doing all the work, um, while Izzo's a lot of good talent. So I'm going to go with Izzo right now. All time, maybe Beheim, but right now I'm going to go with Izzo. Maybe. That's fair. Um, I'm going with Jim Beheim for the reason that out of the past seven seasons, yeah. Jim Beheim's led Syracuse to three uh, three times to the Sweet 16 or further. Tom Izzo has only done that once, and Michigan State has come into seasons arguably with better teams coming into the year than Cuse. Cuse is often doing it um, as a worse seed. But I will say that, um, I mean, it is tough because – Again, I just feel like Izzo has done enough where, like, I'd be tempted to say Izzo, but when you go to March, I feel like Bayheim's actually done better in March as of recent. I love it. All right. This one's my favorite. Shaheen Holloway versus Kevin Willard. Who we got? Well, you know, I set this one up on purpose. Um, <laughs> um, and I didn't do it knowing who I'd pick, so this is actually a raw reaction. Um I think I still have to go with Kevin Willard. I mean, you get the job at Maryland. You get a great program. To me, a top 10 job in college basketball is Maryland. And Kevin Willard um, got that job. And it's been something that Maryland has been pushing for. Um, again, kind of like we've said before, though, if I look at five years from now, even three years from now, I might say Holloway. But um, I don't want to bank it off of just one Elite Eight run 
with St. Peter's. I know that was magical. I know that it shows how great of a coach Shaw is and how Seton Hall should be happy to have him. But Willard just has the track record. And like the argument with um, Tony Bennett, I mean, Willard is still young. I don't even think he's 50 years old yet. Hmm. Keeping it objective. Go ahead, Ariel. Yeah, this one's insanely difficult because we're really basing uh, Shane Holloway's success off of one March Madness run. Not even successful regular season, somewhat good run, just one good season overall. Um, while Willard, you know, he's had a couple of good, not great seasons, um, but he's never been able to perform in March. Um, so I'm going to go with Shaheen, just to disagree with you. Um, I think that March success is extremely important. Um, that's why I have problems with guys like Leonard Hamilton, who haven't been able to make that Final Four in 30-something years, while Shaheen made that Elite Eight in just what, like two, three years of coaching. Um, yeah, like you said, time will tell. This could have been a one one hit wonder kind of thing. Um, even if it is a one hit wonder, Kevin Willard hasn't really shown that like he's consistent and he's going to take a team to a tournament. So this is a time will tell one like um, the Neptune Shire one. But right now I'll go with Shaheen. All right. Last one. It's a good one. Matt Painter versus Chris Beard. Yeah, um, that's wow. This might be the toughest one. Yeah, it's tough. I think for me, um, I will go with Matt Painter just because his success in March has been getting a little bit better. I feel like the joke before was always don't pick Purdue because they're going to get knocked out in the first round. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a joke anymore. We saw how far they made it with Carson Edwards. We saw how good of a team they were last year and how they were threatening to potentially win the whole thing. Um, and I feel like Purdue is becoming that program in the Big Ten where you expect them to be great every single year. Chris Beard's last year with Texas was just a little bit too shaky for me. Um, and I think Painter's overall track record is more. Yeah, um, I think this is a big prove it year for Painter. Um, he's never made that Final Four. This is his 17th season as the Purdue head coach. Last year was obviously his best chance. All he had to do was beat St. Peter's a 15 seed and UNC an 8 seed. Couldn't beat St. Peter's. But I'm going to go with Beard. I mean, a national championship appearance. I think last year, you know, all the pressure of being in Texas and having that rival, um, just being that first-year coach, um, not really getting to pick your team. It, it's always difficult to go in year one and do well. Um, we don't see it that often. Hebert Davis was a weird exception because they brought so many guys back. Um, but I think once he gets more adjusted – um, they'll be a lot better. The Big 12 is insanely competitive right now. Once they move to the SEC, um, it'll be a little bit easier for him, even though the SEC has gone better in uh, recent years. So I'm going to go with Chris Beard just because of tournament success. And in each of their stints, I think Chris Beard's resume looks a little bit better. All right. Awesome stuff today, guys. That was a quick one, one of our quicker ones. Um, season two, episode three is all but finished. Uh, follow us on social media at CBB Review, Insta, Twitter, whatever you got. TikTok, Matt, you mentioned TikTok to me. Is that the same handle? Oh, yeah. Same handle for everything at CBB Review. Follow us. And until next time, for Matt Majinski, Ariel Puderman, and yours truly, we'll see you next time.